As an African, I'm so worried about the situation that is happening all over West Africa. As we all know, there's so much going on in West Africa, in countries like Niger, in countries like Togo, and also Gabon, which has been the most recent. Most importantly, we're here to discuss what has been happening in the state of Niger. There's been a lot of political turbulence and also an ousting of a former leader, also known as a military coup. But the situation in Niger is so dire. It seems like every single time an African country defies whatever the Western bloc says, then they're going to face what are called economic sanctions, military sanctions, and possible threats of use of force under international law. In today's video, we're going to discuss what is happening, especially in the country of Niger, what is happening concerning their economic sanctions and being excluded from the rest of the world. So let's discuss what's happening in Niger and all of that international national law concepts concerning that. Welcome back everyone, Simply Legal. My name is Terry Kahoma, the usual host on this channel. And before we dive right into what's happening in Niger, please hit the subscribe button, hit the notification bell, and most importantly, share these videos with everyone who you know loves the law simplified, discussing current events, because on Simply Legal, we like to simplify the law for you creatively. Now, in today's video, we're going to discuss the situation of what's happening in Niger. Niger is a former colony of France. And as we know, France ruled or colonized a number of African states. We call them the Francophone countries. Now, straight to the point, Niger is one of the biggest suppliers, if not number seven according to worldly studies. It's, it, Niger is number seven on the list of the biggest exporters or people who have minerals such as uranium. So Niger is one of the countries that has the biggest export of uranium all over the world. Well, we had the number one being Russia, but we all know what's happening in the Ukraine-Russia war. That's beside the point. Niger has had a leader who has been in power for very long. Now, the current military coup that has been happening is that we had a military general who has since ousted the former leader and has then, with other generals in the Niger army, have now taken over the state of Niger. Now, Niger is part of an economic body called ECOWAS, which is the economic community for West African countries. Now, ECOWAS has been under also very, very close scrutiny and supervision of the Western world. Now, what do we mean by the Western world? In Uganda, in Africa, we have the African state, we have the Eastern Bloc, then we recently have BRICS, then we have the Western Bloc. The Western Bloc are the former colonies, which are European countries such as France, Sweden, uh, Germany, Italy, and then we also have America because America is also part of a former colony of the European country of Britain. Now, military coups are under what's called uh, threat under international law. Now, ever since the World War I and II, it was then formed the United Nations. Now, we have the different United Nations conventions and charters which came up after the different world wars. Now, why do I bring up United Nations conventions? Because it's because of those conventions charters came under. Now, we have what's called the use of force. ECOWAS, which is Economic Community for West African Countries, it means that ECOWAS is the one that governs the export and imports of different minerals of all the West African countries. Uh, all of them look at Niger, Nigeria, Gabon, Togo, Ivory Coast, all of those. Use of force was then proclaimed by ECOWAS. Now, use of force is something which is a very big legal term under international law. When the United Nations came into play or came into existence after the World War time, it was then governed under the UN Charter, under specifically Article 2, Clause 4. It was then stated that no country under the, which, which has signed under the United Nations uh, Conventions and Charters, which have signed and ratified, that under Article 2, Clause 4, no country is under or is, is within its right to use force. And this also goes into what are called intergovernmental organizations, which are IGOs. Now, no country has come out and said that they are going to use force in Niger or to come and take over a situation in Niger. However, ECOWAS, which is an intergovernmental organization which governs the whole West African bloc in Africa, has come out and then put international economic sanctions. Now, I wanted to give what the law states about economic international sanctions. Now, to help you further understand what economic sanctions are, I want you to first understand what a sanction is. 
a sanction is a restrictive measure that is put on a certain individual or a certain state or country to coerce them to withdraw a certain behavior that they have been doing. So in other words, a sanction is a restrictive measure that an international body puts an international body or another country puts on a certain individual or person because of a bad behavior in courts that they have been doing. Now, economic sanctions are a measure that came after the use of force. I've already explained what use of force means. Use of force is the, the, the use of military force to enter into a specific country to stop them maybe from uh, violating human rights, number one. Also to stop them from uh, performing a certain military coup. I'll give an example of me who comes from Uganda. In Uganda, we had Idi Amin Dada, who was our leader from 1971 to 1979. Idi Amin Dada grossly violated human rights and continuously ignored the Western world and also different other countries. So they, they put a lot of sanctions on him, including economic embargoes, which stopped Uganda from dealing with other international countries. Now, that is what is happening in Niger. ECOWAS, which is Economic Community for West African countries, has now lodged economic sanctions in the following ways. It has advised the neighboring countries of Niger, which are Togo, Burkina Faso, Gabon, Nigeria, especially Nigeria being its parent country, from dealing with Niger economically. They have also advised Nigeria to cut electricity supply to Niger because Niger is a landlocked country. They have stopped all West African countries from trading with Niger. To top, to top that off, other economic powerhouses in the Western world have also stopped trading with Niger and also have stopped giving international aid. Countries like Canada, countries like the United States, countries like France, because Niger has kicked out France's presence in, in its country. So the military coup, the generals have now kicked out any French presence or any presence of France from Niger. So France has definitely retaliated. But there is a deeper reason as to why Niger has, is doing this. Niger being the seventh biggest exporter of uranium has since stopped uranium from leaving Niger because Niger has large quantities of, of uranium. The Western world heavily relies on uranium because studies have found that it is, it is used in, in production of nuclear weapons. It is also used in treating cancer and other diseases. So what does this mean? It means that if, you, if uranium is being removed from Niger, then that means that other countries cannot benefit from the minerals that have been brought into, into the economic market. That is why ECOWAS has put economic sanctions on Niger. Now, what gives ECOWAS the mandate to put economic sanctions on Niger? According to international law and under the UN Charter, it is stated that an intergovernmental body where ECOWAS is lying under, because ECOWAS is an intergovernmental body, ECOWAS can only put in economic sanctions on a country if it is given express instructions from the UN Security Council. Now, I don't know whether this statement I'm going to make can back it up, but the UN Security Council is highly engrossed in the Western world because uh, countries like the US, country, countries like France, countries like Canada, Germany, they have a very huge influence on the United Nations Security Council. Now, that is why the UN Security Council has turned a blind eye to ECOWAS, which is an intergovernmental body, to put economic sanctions on Niger. Now, that is what I wanted to explain to you. I wanted to explain the fact that what is happening in Niger is a very complicated situation. They have cut electricity into Niger. That cripples them economically. They have also cut trade to, to be able, for Niger to be able to export its different goods all over the world. Now, I don't know if this is a battle of uranium. I don't know if it's a battle of Putin versus the Western world. But we're going to see a lot of players into these different West African countries. As an African, I would like to state that this is very sad because we already saw Ukraine and Russia going head to head ever since 2021 and this has been something that has been making the world cry. Now, when we are seeing, for example, the coup in Gabon, when we are seeing the coup in Niger, when we are seeing what has been happening also in Togo, then it's very sad that 
our dear continent of Africa is being exploited so much. Our minerals are being exploited. We're seeing a lot of unrest into our continent. And most importantly, we're seeing that we're not having legal procedures being followed because ECOWAS, which is Economic Community for West African countries, was supposed to get permission from the UN Security Council, but I've not landed any report where the UN Security Council has given ECOWAS the mandate under the United Nations Charter to put economic sanctions on Niger. So I wanted to explain those concepts to you. We have the use of force or the use of threat of force. No country did that to Niger, but I wanted to explain to you that use of force is under international law. The UN Security Council did not give ECOWAS a mandate to put economic sanctions on Niger. That cripples the country so much. Now, I don't know what the fate of Niger is going to be from time to time, but a military coup is something which the UN Security Council is deeply involved because any military coup in any country all over the world destabilizes how the country operates. So I want to discuss those concepts for you and let's see where the situation of Niger goes from here. I'm my name is truly Terry Kahuma. Please hit the subscribe button, hit the notification bell, and most importantly, share these videos with everyone who you know would want the law simplified for them, either current events or troublesome legal topics. If there's anything you liked in this future video, please leave it in the comment section. If there's anything you want me to do in a future video, any topic, please let me know in the comment section as well. And please hit the subscribe button, hit the notification bell once and for all. And until next time, bye.